Hey folks, Jason here, aka Diet Toms, and uh, I just wanted to share a small little upgrade that I made to my microscope. Uh, it involves uh, just adding one little component to the Olympus uh, Nomarski Interference Contrast slash Phase Contrast Condenser. Uh, which is the one that I use. I don't use the, uh, the, the universal condenser, what is it, the UCD or, or whatever that is. Um, to just kind of set the stage here, you know, whenever I'm, I'm streaming, um, it's always nice to be able to like switch between different uh, illumination modes. And with uh, the, the NIC uh, condenser, uh, I can get bright field, DIC, and phase contrast. I don't typically tend to use phase contrast very much, but but every now and then it's nice to kind of pull out of my pocket. Um, and so that's pretty good, but there is one glaring omission and that is dark field. I really like dark field um, for certain subjects, especially things like copepods. I think they look amazing in dark field. And um, so it's always been really rough, you know, anytime that I want to uh, you know, film copepod in uh, dark field, I have to actually like take my condenser off and, and kind of the, the stream goes silent for a while as I uh, fiddle around uh, with, with everything. And um, I figured out actually a really cool way to uh, uh, just sort of circumvent this. Uh, and that's by uh, for changing up kind of what I'm doing. I'm, I'm doing some non-standard stuff. Um, so first of all, when I'm doing bright field, I've actually got the polarizer in that you would normally have in for DIC. Um, now, since I don't have anything going on up top in the microscope, uh, this really doesn't do anything except cut down the, the input light by half. And since bright field is, I've got plenty of light and uh, plenty of sensitive camera, it's not that big of a deal. Um, but then in the aperture that would normally be for bright field, I've put a dark field uh, patch stop. And so right now we are at um, pretty close to, to curler illumination. There we go. Um, and so I just want to show you kind of what happens when I uh, pull the patch stop into place. Um, so I'm going to grab my, um, my, my polarizer slider and I'm going to pull it out into what the normal bright field position would be. Then I'm going to open up my iris all the way and you can just barely see there's a little bit of light but it's dark in the middle and that just means we need to raise our condenser up and so actually anytime that you have dark field that's dark in the middle usually it just means you need to raise your condenser up now what I do is I actually I kind of bring it up until I kiss the slide and then I drop it down a little bit and uh, and then I'm just gonna bump up my uh, my ISO on the camera so we get a nice exposure on this copepod. And so here we are, I'm using my, my 4X uh, S-Plane Apo lens, and we're getting just a beautiful inky black dark field uh, with this wonderfully exposed uh, copepod. I think we can go, what, one? I think I think right here is it's just about uh, perfect. And um, yeah, this is just, uh, it's fantastic to be able to switch into dark field so easily. And uh, dark field obviously is just one of the most striking uh, things that you can do with a microscope. Uh, it gets wonderful results. Um, now you might notice there is a little bit of vignetting uh, with the 4X. And I think that's just kind of normal for the 4X. This, uh, even in bright field, there's a, a pretty good uh, a kind of tapering off as you go uh, uh, towards the edges of the image. But if we go to the 10X lens, this is my 10X s Plan Apo uh, lens, then we get uh, a real nice uh, dark field and there is there's no vignetting or, or anything like that. Uh, it's just just good old dark field. Uh, let's see if we can find our, um, we got some, uh, some little zoid worms. Oh, is that, actually that's a, uh, a stenostomum right there. It's a voracious little predator. And uh, let's see if we can find um, our copepod again. Yeah, yeah, here we go. And uh, of course, it just looks amazing. Drop the exposure down a little bit. 
Look at this bad boy. Oh, I love it. Look at the, the little spines on the tail. Just so good. And, um, and then the really cool thing is I can actually push this all the way to 20X. And this is a 20X S-Plan APO, uh, which means we're, we're using a, a numerical aperture of 0.7. Um, so that's always famously pretty difficult to get a uh, dark field at. It's not impossible, especially if you use oil, but of course that has its own drawbacks. And so here we are getting nice dark field. Oh, just so good. And um, so I'm gonna back off again to the 10X here. And I'm gonna show you again, now I can pull the, uh, actually what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drop down my exposure first so I don't blind anybody. I'm gonna pull the, uh, or I'm gonna push the polarizer back into place. And I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll get my iris back here. And then I'm just gonna realign for curler since I had to, uh, to lift up the, uh, the stage a little bit. Yeah, it looks like we need to yeah, just pop this down a little bit like that. Um, so there we go, we got nice uh, curler again. And then to switch into DIC, it's really straightforward because I've already got a polarizer in. So I just need to change over to the 10X prism, open my iris all the way, and then pop in the DIC slider. And, uh, and then we'll just bump the exposure up again. And uh, here we are getting some nice DIC imagery. And of course, since I'm using the, um, uh, the S-Plan APO objectives, I don't get quite I actually get a very uneven feel um, in the background, but it really doesn't bother me uh, at all. Uh, in fact, sometimes I kind of like how it looks. Uh, just look at these wonderful diatoms. Uh, I think these are all star anise. And uh, oh, they're, just, they're just beautiful. Everything, everything here is beautiful in DIC. Uh, oh, look at that. Oh, I forgot what these are called. Um, I just talked about them the other day with another streamer. And... Um, yeah, just, just super beautiful Terria. And um, yeah, I guess actually while we're here, I'll, I'll just show that, you know, one of the one of the cool things that you can do with the, uh, yeah, there's a nice star anise for us to really can see the star us going through it. Um, I'm just gonna kinda, I'm gonna pop my exposure down a little bit and then just go to my colors here. And, you know, there's something about this, you know, it's nice to have a, an even background, I'll admit, but I think it's also nice to have this like gradient going by. Look at that stenostomum. These things are just, just absolutely vicious. And um, so this is just a, a, a really cool, uh, really cool effect that I, I, I do like with the 10X. Um, and then if you go to the 20X, um, like this, you actually get uh, the S-Plan Apo 20X. Uh, you actually get a pretty even, um, uh, pretty even field. Uh, it's it's not perfectly even, but but I, I'd say it's it's pretty darn good. And uh, so there we go. Let's see. I think we can come up a little bit more. Drop the the uh, the contrast down. And uh, yeah, this is uh, this is a deep well slide, by the way. So I'm I'm actually kind of going well beyond the what I ought to be doing. Um, but yeah, we get great results like this. This looks like uh, Pinularia swinging by here. And uh, just bump that up a little bit. And uh, so then from here. Um, I can also go back into phase contrast. So I have some um, D-Plan APO phase contrast objectives. And so I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to my 10X uh, annulus. I'm gonna switch to the 10X phase contrast objective. I'm gonna pull out the DIC slider and we'll just touch up exposure a little bit. I'm at uh, ISO 2000 right now. And uh, you can see we've got a lovely phase contrast effect. Um, let's see if we can find 
Yeah, we can see some some little uh, you know fibrous bacteria. Uh, oh, there's a nice one there. You can see they're nice and dark. And uh, so yeah, we've gotten um, basically all the way through. Um, kind of the I don't know. These these are pretty much the major uh, um, illumination styles that that you have on a microscope. And so this is just super cool. I think um, you know anyone with a with a DIC slider that works similarly ought to kind of give this a shot. See if there's a way to do this because uh, it's just so cool. So I've never seen the, uh, the Spirogyra with the phase contrast, and I kind of love it. Looks cool. Um, but uh, so yeah, let's just uh, let's see. Um, well, I'll just try to challenge myself now. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go, try to go back to dark field. So I kind of still new to this. So I'm gonna pull in my dark field annulus. I'm gonna switch back to the 10x uh, non-phase objective. And let's see. I need to uh, raise up my condenser. And until we just kiss the slide, and then I need to drop my exposure down a good bit. And there we go. We're back at dark field. Looking great. Having some fun, doing some great microscopy. Um, okay, going from this to DIC, we need to push the polarizer back in, switch over to the 10, pop in the analyzer, boom, readjust, drop down our exposure a little bit. Here we are back in DIC. It's just awesome. Uh, okay, go back to, uh, we'll go back to right field to finish things off. Switch back to the right field position on the condenser. Uh, we're already in the right position with the polarizer, just need to pull the analyzer out and bring our iris down a little bit to, uh, to get to right field. And you know what? Bright field, I don't use it often enough. Uh, it really does have a special quality all of its own. Um, so it's worth worth exploring, uh, even if you're kind of addicted to, to DIC and uh, uh, and dark field or face contrast, whatever whatever illumination technique you like. Don't don't forget about good old bright field, good old Ernst Abe and uh, the uh, numerical aperture and the Abe condenser and, and all that fun stuff. Um, that's where it all came from. So anyway, uh, that's it. That's what I wanted to show. Um, again, just to, to recap, we've got bright field, dark field, DIC, and phase contrast all on one condenser. Just super smooth, super slick. I'm loving it. I'll catch you guys next time.